Night, buddy. <laughs> the excitement of Jimmy Chitwood running the last second picket fence play in Hoosiers. Rocky calling for Adrian from a blood-covered boxing ring. And damn, that iconic Mighty Ducks flying V and Triple Deke for the win. Sports movies put us in the shoes of an athlete and take us through an emotional and physical journey from their lowest point to eventual glory and redemption. But in 1996, we got a baseball movie so hollow and cheesy, so poorly thought out, so proudly lazy, that it most likely destroyed human monkey baseball relations forever. This is the worst sports movie. Santa Rosa, California, dusty ball field, the year of our Lord, 1990, who even knows? A baseball playing chimpanzee has a fart off with a child. The same child questions Matt LeBlanc's sexuality. Are you gay? There's a masturbation joke in this children's movie. I'm gonna spank that monkey. Animal torture via electrocution. That baseball playing chimp barely plays any baseball. There's magic, I just... Uh... Okay, sorry, let's take a step back. If you don't know Ed, and dear God, why would you, let's do a quick rundown of its, quote, plot. Here's Jack Cooper, but let's just call him Joey. It's much easier that way. He throws one pitch at a tryout and makes it onto a minor league team, a professional team. Holy torpedo, Batman! Unfortunately, he has performance issues in front of people, and that's kind of a bad look for a professional baseball player. So he ends up running errands for the team instead. Joey is then told to go pick up the new guy, which, surprise, is the titular Ed, an unattended chimpanzee that's actually a person in a costume with a robotic head that reportedly made so much noise, every line of dialogue had to be re-recorded if the chimp was nearby. Smart. Anyway, 16 minutes into the movie, we learn the chimpanzee is really good at baseball. So this is when the movie takes off, right? Nope. They decide to not have Ed play baseball for another 30 minutes when a teammate not played by Jim Caviezel, because by the way, Jesus is in this movie, gets hit by a foul ball and is knocked unconscious. Ed comes in, the umpire gives a speech that boils down to rules don't say monkeys can't play ball, and we get an unassisted triple play from the chimp. Joey gains confidence, the team gets hot, and they fast track to the championship game, though the greedy owner sells Ed before the big game or something. Joey kidnaps him back, then pitches a complete game, we see like three pitches, while Ed watches from the stands in a hospital gown, Joey wins, the real Tommy Lasorda wants him, and he moves to LA, the end. Look, this movie is bad. Case in point, monkeys aside, why would a professional baseball team even sign a guy who's barely played the sport and crumbles to ash in front of spectators? Aha, but remember this, 1996 was chock full of people taking chances on garbage. For instance, dancing the Macarena in public like an idiot. Physically fighting other people at Christmas time for a Tickle Me Elmo doll. Or listening to the Spice Girls so much that their first single wannabe would become a smash hit, eventually leading to another soul-crushing movie just a year later. Um, blah, 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 um, girl power, feminism, do you know what I mean? Speaking of wannabes, this movie, Ed, has zero idea what it wants to be or even who it's made for. We get some animal torture by electrocution, but also some slapstick type toupee humor. Joey gets extremely drunk and allows a chimpanzee to drive him home in a motor vehicle. Then we get all sorts of farts just for the sake of farts. They're not even really good farts. Ed goes to a hospital for humans. There's some coin that will decide Joey's fate. And the evil owner gets dollar signs in place of his eyeballs. It has everything and yet it has nothing. And I don't know, maybe this is asking too much, but in a movie about a baseball playing monkey, we see said monkey play baseball exactly three times, two of which are in montages. But we do know that Ed is a national sensation because he lands on the covers of Sports Illustrated, Muscle Fitness, and I, here it is, Teen Beat. At one point, we even see Ed watching some monkey-related TV, an early episode of Friends, yes, Friends, featuring Marcel the monkey while Joey himself sleeps in the next room. Ah, it's so meta, it's so funny, ah. So if Ed exists in a universe with our media, why not watch a different monkey-centered vehicle in Dunstan Checks In, which premiered two months earlier and currently still stands six points above Ed on the Rotten Tomato meters at six. Hell, while you're at it, why not have him strum recent chart topper Wonderwall while playing Pokemon, the card game, mind you, and ask Jeeves, what makes a good movie? Because at this point, nothing matters anymore.
All that said, luckily, nobody went and paid American dollars to see Ed, so there's still some sense in the world. It finished 1996 as the 156th highest grossing film in America, a year in which people actually wanted to spend money to go see actually decent sports movies, such as Happy Gilmore, Jerry Maguire, Space Jam, Tin Cup, Kingpin, hell, even most of what Demi Moore was doing in striptease was athletic. Oh, and don't confuse Ed with Whoopi Goldberg's Eddie, which made seven times as much money at the box office. <laughs> you know what? Maybe 1996 taught us that we don't need to take chances. Maybe Matt LeBlanc didn't need to test the waters beyond friends. And maybe, just maybe, it's time we woke up to what the movie was really trying to tell us the whole time. The animals are coming back to retake their planet. Run. That makes Rudy almost seem like a good movie. Almost. Thanks for watching The Worst. Subscribe to SB Nation and comment down below with what worst you want to see. We will prob... We might make it.